right. So um, obviously the topic of this session is engineering professional courses and pathway uh, and PR pathway. So we're going to talk about the skills assessment criteria for engineers in Australia and how uh, the in various engineering occupations could lead to PR pathways in Australia. Um, so as I said earlier, Engineers Australia is the skills assessing body for all the engineering occupations uh, in Australia. Obviously, some of the engineers which are which are related to um, uh, uh, ICT, uh, like computer engineer, software engineer, or uh, computer network and systems engineer, are assessed by a different body, which is Australian Computer Society. But rest of the engineers um, are assessed by the, this body, which is called Engineers Australia. Um, so you can get assessed as an engineer from the Engineers Australia, which is a professional engineer. Uh, now this, uh, all the all the occupations under this category require you to have a four years bachelor's uh, uh, for you to be able to get a successful skills assessment. Uh, the second category is engineering technologist. It only requires you to have a three years bachelor's instead of the four years bachelor's in engineering. And then you can possibly get the skills assessment as an engineering technologist. Then engineering associate, you need to have an advanced diploma as a minimum to get assessed under this category. And then there's engineering manager, uh, where you must have um, a certain experience after your qualifications, engineering qualifications, before you are able to get assessed under this category. Um, so there are two pathways uh, for engineers uh, in Australia to get the skills assessment done. The first one is uh, through accredited qualifications, and the second one is through non-accredited qualifications. Under the accredited qualifications, um, uh, we have four categories. One is Australian quali qualifications, the qualifications which fall under the Washington Accord, uh, the qualifications which fall under the Sydney Accord, and the Dublin Accord. So under the Australian qualifications, um, there are various uh, educational institutions in Australia, various universities, where if you study, uh, you do your master's or your bachelor's from there, and if they are accredited by Engineers Australia, uh, you would be able to get your skills assessment straight away uh, based on your qualifications. And it is uh, it is very similar in, in cases of qualifications which are uh, already uh, accepted under Washington Accord or Sydney Accord or Dublin Accord. So uh, if, if your qualifications fall under any one of those accords, you will be, you will be able to get a skills assessment uh, straight away uh, based on your qualifications. Um, uh, all this information is available on the Engineers Australia website. Uh, you can get linked to various institutions which are accredited by. Uh, so there's a list of um, colleges and universities on the Engineers Australia website, uh, which will show you which colleges and universities are accredited and whether they are fully accredited or provisionally accredited by Engineers Australia or not. Uh, so make sure the, the the university and the course that you've studied in the university uh, is fully accredited for you to be able to uh, apply under this category, which is accredited qualifications. Um, and the second uh, uh, pathway is uh, under the non-accredited qualifications. Now, you could have done your engineering from uh, anywhere, which could be overseas or in Australia, which is not accredited by Engineers Australia. That doesn't mean that you cannot get your skills assessment from Engineers Australia. You can still apply for the skills assessment, but you'll have to go through the uh, pathway, which we call as CDR pathway. So under the CDR pathway, you basically have to make three career episodes, uh, uh, in which which could be based on the projects that you may have done during your engineering degree or any employment episode that you would have done during your engineering degree or after your engineering degree. So career episodes are basically three essays, which could be around 2000 to 2500 words long, where you have to uh, show how you approached a particular project and how what, what 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 was your learning in that project or the employment episode that you're using to make your uh, career episode on. And uh, ultimately, you have to show how, how you applied that knowledge and uh, basically uh, solve that project. So you basically, you have to make those three career episodes yourself, uh, and only then you would be able to get um, the skills assessment under that pathway. Uh, along with the three uh, uh, career episodes, you have to uh, give a, a, a summary statement as well, and you have to prepare a CPD statement as well. So which is, which is, uh, which is nothing major, as long as you've got your career episodes, you would be able to provide those two as well. So these are the two pathways under which 
you can get your uh, skills assessment. Well, if you have an accredited qualification, it's going to be super simple. All you have to do is uh, it's a qualification based assessment. All you have to do is meet the rest of the eligibility criteria, such as um, uh, the IELTS score uh, and other other. Uh, you have to provide them all the documents which are required by them. Under the non accredited qualifications, it becomes a little bit longer process because you'll have to write three career episodes based on your projects or your employment episodes. Uh, and make sure if you're writing your career episodes based on uh, your employment episodes, you give them the proof of employment as well, which is absolutely necessary as well. Um, so under the accredited pathway, this is the uh, this is the brief checklist. So all you need is uh, your identification documents, your degree certificates and your uh, transcripts, etc. Uh, your resume, your English test results, uh, which should be a minimum of at least six in all the components. Uh, although there are exemptions available as well, if you studied your bachelor's or a master's in Australia, you could possibly get exempted from uh, your English as well. And uh, four hundred and seventy dollars is the fee uh, for the for the uh, engineer's skills assessment under this pathway. Um, um, under the CDR pathway, I've already told you the criteria before, so you can have your degree overseas uh, from overseas. Uh, you can have your degree from an Australian university, which is not accredited by the uh, Engineers Australia. You need three career episodes and uh, the fee for for uh, un, uh, skills assessment under this pathway is uh, approximately eight hundred dollars. Well, ha however, if you want to do it under in fast track, which uh, it'll cost you around three, uh, three hundred fifty dollars extra. Uh, I would always recommend my clients to go under the fast track because in the normal processing they could take up to three months. So I always recommend to pay that extra money um, uh, and, and get it done under fast track, which is much, much shorter uh, than the normal time they take to get um, uh, to get the degrees uh, assessed. Um, and also it is important to note here that it is not necessary um, that you get your skills assessment done based on your Australian degree. So let's say you've studied something in Australia for two years. Uh, you qualify uh, for a particular state based on uh, on that two years of study, uh, but you cannot possibly get an occupation based on that two years of study. That doesn't mean that you've lost all hope. If you can still get an occupation based on your overseas study and that occupation in, is, is on that state's uh, list, you can still qualify. So the skills assessment for an occupation or the occupation that you're trying to nominate yourself in for PR purposes does not does not have to be necessarily based on Australian studies only. It can be based on your overseas studies as well. So if you've got some experience and got some qualifications uh, uh, overseas, you can get a skills assessment done on that basis as well. Um, so this these are the requirements for the career episodes basically. So as I said earlier, the word limit has to be 2000 to 2250. Um, uh, so it's just practical application of knowledge acquired for the subject studied. Uh, and how you actually what difficulties were faced and how you approached uh, any particular difficulty and how you actually resolved it. So those are the things case officers would be looking for in your career episodes. Uh, sometimes what happens is if your career episodes are not up to the mark, uh, they can engineers Australia can still offer you um, an assessment for an engineering technologist, which is a little bit lower level than the professional engineering um, assessment, as I told you earlier. Uh, but yeah, so the career episodes have to be really good uh, for for you to actually uh, sort of get a uh, skills assessment from Engineers Australia. So you have to make sure that you approach the career episodes in a proper manner and pr uh, follow the proper format uh, as given on the Engineers Australia website. Um, uh, associate degree um, for so, sometimes what happens is that people who've studied overseas or even in Australia, they do not have uh, some any major project during the engineering degree, or they do not have any employment episode or do not have any employment um, experience after they completed the engineering degree or even during the engineering degree. For those people, there's an option of completing an associate degree for two years. And they, after they complete their associate degree for two years from an accredited institution, uh, which is accredited by Engineers Australia, they would be able to get a successful skills assessment as a professional engineer uh, from Engineers Australia. So. So if you do not have any projects that you can possibly base your career episodes on, 
uh, doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean that you've lost all hope. You can still complete this two years degree and get your skills assessed uh, from Engineers Australia in one of the professional engineering occupations. Um, as I told you earlier, there are two. So you can get your employment assessed from Engineers Australia as well. So if you're if you are if your career episode is based on one of the employment episodes, then obviously you have to provide evidence of your employment uh, to Engineers Australia. Otherwise, it's not required. Also, if you're applying in the occupation for engineering managers, uh, it's important uh, that you, um, because you need five years of experience post qualifications uh, to get a successful skills assessment for engineering manager, you must get your employment assessed. Otherwise, obviously, you will not be able to get a successful skills assessment. Uh, even if your career episodes are not based on um, your employment, they're just based on some projects that you may have done during your um, degree. You can still get your employment assessed uh, for claiming uh, points, although it is not mandatory. Uh, what I mean to say is that you can still claim points for your engineering experience and still uh, and not get your experience assessed by Engineers Australia. So in case your career episode is not based on your employment episode or you're not getting the skills assessment for engineer, uh, engineering manager, employment assessment would be absolutely voluntarily. It is not mandatory at all. But for your peace of mind and, and to absolutely know that you're claiming right points, uh, it's not a bad idea to get your employment assessed from Engineers Australia. Uh, if you do decide to get your employment assessed from Engineers Australia, these are the documents that you would require, which are on the slide uh, in order to get uh, your employment assessed. So employment reference letter uh, on the company's letterhead, which you mention your pay rate, your hours that you were working, your duties that you were performing, uh, obviously, your duties that you were performing have to be uh, very closely related to the occupation that you're trying to nominate yourself in. And it should be signed by the supervisor or the general manager or HR manager, whatever the case might be, whoever is authorized to sign. Obviously, you have to give them the payment evidence as well, which could be your super documents, your tax records, your pay slips, your bank statements. And there's an obviously an extra fee as well if you want to get your um, um, employment assessed from Engineers Australia. Um, let me just have a look at some of the questions that might have come in. You can bear with me for a second. OK, we've got some questions here. Um, so the first question is from a guest. Uh, which engineering course should I go for that would give easy PR if I'm starting now? Well, see, the thing is that I'll explain um, in detail the criteria for PR in a uh, in like in in a few minutes, but you should look at various states list. So, so how skilled migration in Australia is at this point in time is that we've got state sponsored visas, uh, where as the name suggests, those visas are sponsored by the state, and we've got independent visas as well, where we've got we've got a skilled occupation list uh, given to us by the department. And all the occupations in that list would qualify you for under that category. Uh, I always um, advise my clients uh, that one should make yourself, uh, make themselves eligible for state sponsorship because the bulk of the seats under the skilled migration program in Australia are reserved under that category, which is state sponsorship. So sh you should have a you should have a read of various state criteria and look at the occupations the various states have in their occupation lists and then go for those occupations. Obviously, your your interests matter as well. Obviously, if you want to do civil engineering, I would not advise you to go for uh, mechanical because if if you are, well, obviously it depends on your background as well. So somebody who's done bachelor's in civil engineering would most mostly be comfortable doing a master's in civil engineering as well. So um, as I said, uh, there are many engineering occupations uh, on all states list. But uh, the, uh, it's a it's a good idea to go through various states list and find out uh, which engineering occupations are most popular and which engineering occupations are there on most of the states lists. Right, um, so that's the main thing. So you should go for uh, have a read of the state criteria, have a read of the state occupation list. Um, the second question is from Dipankar. Uh, he's saying how is engineering diploma in civil construction design in terms of PR in Australia? Well, the Panker with the diploma in civil with an advanced diploma in civil construction design, you should be able to get you can possibly get a skills assessment for 
um, a, a civil engineering drafts person. Uh, again, you have to uh, find out whether your course is accredited by Engineers Australia or not. If your course is not accredited, you'll have to go through the CDR pathway, as I was explaining earlier. If your course is accredited, though, it, it's going to be a qualification based assessment, which essentially means once you complete two years of study, your advanced diploma in civil construction design, you should be able to get a skills assessment for uh, civil engineering drafts person. Now, this is a very popular course again. Um, this is on various states lists as well. Um, and and yeah, I, I, I would say it's, it's a good good course, uh, especially if you are interested in doing such a course in terms of PR in Australia. Just just uh, go through the state criteria. It's on the MLT SSL list as well, uh, which is the subclass 189 independent category. So yeah, it's a good course for PR in Australia. Uh, go for it, I would say. Um, we've got another question from Hemad. Uh, what are the chances of chemical engineer with 90 points for 189 and completed two years of study from WA but doesn't have a job? Uh, Hemad, see, 189, you only get invited for one, as you probably already know, you only get invited for 189 with, on, with very high points. Normally, the cutoff is 95 points. Uh, sometimes it could go uh, to, to come down to 90 points as well. But I always tell my clients you never to rely on that stream because there's no guarantee that you could get, get invited for 189 and you should always prepare yourself uh, for one of the one of the one of the state uh, uh, sponsored visas. So you should always make yourself eligible under one of the state sponsored visas uh, for you to have um, a maximum chance of getting invited for 190 or 491. Now you've studied under, I can see that you've studied from WA. That means that you must be eligible under the graduate list and chemical engineer is on the graduate list as well uh, on WA. So I think uh, your chances of getting invited by WA are very, very high. You would pre pretty much get invited next month. Yeah, obviously you need to have a six months job experience or six months job of a letter from an employer in WA uh, as a chemical engineer or a closely related occupation. So that's a must. Unfortunately, uh, you'll have to find a job from an employer, but that's the only hiccup. As far as the invitation is concerned, I'm pretty sure you'll get invited very, very quickly. Um, I've got Prashani here who's asking, what are the chances of quantity surveyors who completed Bachelor of Construction Management degree. See, Prashani, um, you have to have a skills assessment. I'm not sure whether you've already got a skills assessment as a quantity surveyor. You have to have worked for at least one year. Uh, I think the, the, the skills assessment for this occupation is done by AIQS. Uh, so you will have to have one year of work experience post qualification to get a successful skills assessment. If you studied from one of the accredited um, Australian educational institution, and um, once you get the skills assessment, uh, there are various states that have this occupation on the list. Just make sure you qualify for one of them uh, and you have high enough points uh, to get invited from one of the states. Uh, Sridhar is asking me what are the chances of PR as an electrical engineer with 85 points or 189 and completed two years of study from NSW have a job in nominated field in Sydney. Sridhar, um, as I was stating earlier, do not depend on 189, even if you have higher points. Always uh, always try to uh, become eligible for the state sponsorship. Uh, now, you've got good points, 85 points for 189. That'll mean that you've got 90 points for 190, and you're already working in Sydney. Now, normally, you would have qualified for NSW 190 in these circumstances. Uh, and I would say you've got a good chance of getting invited as well. But currently, the state nomination, they're not taking um, invitations anymore. They're not doing invitations anymore. Uh, so let them open up. I guess you would have a good chance of getting invited from NSW. Although I'm based in Perth, I do not do many Sydney nominations, but yes. But going by uh, the data that I have for Sydney, I think you've got a good chance of getting invited by NSW. You've got a good chance of getting invited in Perth as well, uh, because um, uh, uh, and in Perth, uh, this occupation falls under the general stream, which essentially means that all you have to do is have a skills assessment for that occupation, and you can uh, possibly put up an expression of interest for W. I'll be talking about W state migration in a minute, where you can hear those details um, later. Okay, I've got um, 
Ricky asking me, hi Rajan, I did MBA in WA. I have positive skills assessment in mechanical engineering and working part-time in mechanical field in SA for six months um, and have 80 points excluding state points. Um, working part-time, well, oh, you've got a skills assessment in mechanical engineering. Well, uh, I think you've got a very good chance of getting invited in WA, that's for sure. Um, as far as uh, South Australian state nomination is concerned, I think you have to work a little bit more. Uh, I think uh, the requirement to work as a mechanical engineer in South Australia is around 18 months if you're in the Adelaide region. So um, because you've studied in uh, WA and you're not a South Australian graduate, I think you will need to work a little bit more in South Australia to get uh, nominated under the South Australian state nomination uh, criteria. But obviously uh, it seems that you're eligible for WA under the graduate list. I think you've got a much better chances of uh, getting invited in WA uh, than South Australia. And, and when I say you've got much better chances of getting an invitation in WA, I, I, I essentially mean that you can you can probably get invited within within a couple of months. Uh, Vandana, hi Rajan, did I master's in telecommunications engineering, have been in regional NSW and currently working in related occupations since September 2021. Uh, what are the chances of 189-190 invite for NSW? Um, you haven't written your points here, but one thing I've noticed that NSW 190 is normally coming in uh, at, at higher points. It was normally coming in at higher points. So if you've got a um, score of um, around 90 points, including the state points, I would say yes, you've got a chance uh, of getting invited. But, um, but have a look at the regional. I guess you do not want to go for 491. That is why you're asking me for the chances for 189190. Um, so yeah, I, I would say yes. You 189, you can put up an UI, but I, I, it's 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 purely luck whether you could get invited for 189 or not. You cannot depend on 189 these days, in my opinion, of course. Um, King Mohit uh, is a asking me uh, I finished my bachelor's in information technology and systems. Um, can I apply my visa on basis on engineering? Well, Mohit, I do not think your degree is an engineering degree. I think you'll have to get. I think your degree is an IT degree. I think you'll have to go through ACS to, to get your degree assessed, provided obviously you meet the criteria. You should have a degree which has IT major in it and, and stuff like that. How is advanced diploma of civil construction skill assessment done? Uh, well, it is done through the banker through Engineers Australia. Again, um, you can actually watch my video again. You can watch my slides again as well after this. I had explained earlier that uh, there are two pathways accredited and non accredited. So you could possibly qual qualify under one of those two pathways and you get your degree assessed from Engineers Australia. Um, Binoy Thomas is asking me if we have a skills assessment completed and are working in the same field, do I need to assess my employment as well? Uh, Binoy, um, no, not necessarily. Uh, so employment assessment is, uh, even if you're claiming points for your employment, it is uh, employment assessment still remains volu voluntary. So it is up to you for your own peace of mind and for you to be sure that your experience matches with that of your nominated occupation. Uh, you can get your experience assessed. It's a good idea if you are going, uh, doing your PR uh, to, uh, like by yourself, not taking any professional's help. Uh, but if you are taking any professional's uh, help, they should be able to guide you whether your experience can qualify for claiming points for migration purposes or not. Uh, do you do help in writing CDR report? No, we do not, ma'am. Uh, it is, um, you could, uh, you have to write your CDR reports yourself. I've seen so many cases where people get their CDR reports written from somewhere else and they get a ban of 12 months from Engineers Australia, which basically ruins their career. So you have to make sure that it is your own work uh, and uh, absolutely it has to be your own work. Uh, I'm planning to move to regional area from NSW for Cookery, which state is better, South Australia or Western Australia? Uh, Madiha, uh, well, I'm based in Perth. I'm a little bit biased towards it as well, but I guess uh, still uh, Western Australia is currently, I would say, the best state 
for people who've studied interstate uh, because uh, we've got a stream which is called general stream where people all all people need is that they have to have a skills assessment for an occupation under that list there's no additional requirement like for south australia there could be a requirement that you have to work there for at least 12 months before they could nominate you uh, or or similar but in Western Australia, there's no such requirement. You qualify straight away if you've got a skills assessment for that particular occupation, which is under the general stream. I'm only talking about people who've studied uh, outside of Western Australia here. Um, and after, after you get invited, you need, an, uh, need a 12 months employment contract from an employer in WA. Um, that's only after you get invited. Before invite, invitation, you can put up an UI straight away if you've got a skills assessment. So I, I think Western Australia is a much better state to move in. Cool. Uh, Chirag Barot is asking, my brother-in-law is Canadian PR. He got PR on the basis of degree. Uh, he wants to come here in Australia. Yes, certainly, uh, Chirag. Uh, you can send us your resume, uh, your brother's resume, and we can have a look and see if he can qualify for one of the states in Australia, and then we can uh, move forward from there. We can take it from there. Um, I think Dipanka, uh, Dipanka, you can uh, you asking the same question again. You can contact us personally, and we'd be able to answer your more specific queries regarding your skills assessment criteria for for civil construction design diploma. All right. Uh, so um, yeah, we'll be able to uh, uh, address all your questions there. Uh, So Manu Wanga is asking me, I have done my master's in IT, business analytics. What are the next steps to get my PR in IT? See, Wanga, the, the first step, as I said, doesn't matter what you've studied. Uh, you cannot become an accountant by studying accounting, or you cannot become an engineer by studying engineering. Uh, for migration purposes, I'm saying. You have to, the first step is always to get a skills assessment done. So whatever you've done, you need to first ascertain what skills assessment, what occupations skills assessment you can get. So let's say uh, based on your degree, you think you can get a uh, skills assessment for business analyst. Then uh, you have to find out which body uh, you, you should be applying for and what is the criteria for that particular body to get this successful skills assessment. Uh, so yeah, it seems so if you're going for business analyst, for example, you have to go through ACS criteria and see what you need to do. Obviously, you're more than welcome to contact us and we'll be able to help you out with your skills assessment process. Yeah. Uh, Mohammed is asking me, I'm in my fourth year of mechatronics. Um, well, as I said, I've told you the criteria for NSW and there are NSW regional criteria as well. Um, so they're currently not giving out any invitations because they are closed for this financial, uh, the last financial year and they have not, they haven't come up with the new criteria yet, but they'll soon do. So under the NSW regional, uh, you've got three streams. The first one is that you have to be living and working there. Um, and second one is that you, you have you should have studied for two years and your occupation should be on that region's list. And the third one is you just have to have a skills assessment for an occupation. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, just um, get a skills assessment done in one of the occupations that you might qualify for and see if you qualify for the criteria of that particular region. Um, and that should be that. Uh, I think you should look for 491 NSW. Uh, um, that should that should give you um, the best possible chance of getting invited. Um, OK. Um, so Abhishek is asking me what type of jobs would be considered uh, as closely related for automotive engineering technologist. Uh, so so the way you find out uh, the closely related occupations is through ANSCO. So you have to go on the ANSCO website and see what falls under the uh, same unit group. So any occupation which has the four, the first four digits uh, of, the, of the, the entire six digit number of ANSCO, similar are closely related occupations. So if I, if I talk about engineering, engineer technologists, So it comes under the unit group, other engineering professionals. Um, uh, so uh, uh, if uh, that's on the ANSCO website, uh, which is uh, governed by Australian Bureau of Statistics. Uh, so, uh, 
so the first four digits of this uh, uh, ANSCO code is 2339. So all the occupations which have the first four digits as 2339 are all closely related occupations to engineering technologists. So that's how you find out, So it, which include aeronautical, agricultural, biomedical, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how you find out which closely, which are the closely related occupations. Um, um, I have, um, sorry, I'm just trying to uh, figure out which questions I've answered and which I haven't. Spare with me. Yeah, I'm so got this got this question from. Um, uh, from Kumaran. Uh, he says I have electronics engineer and telecommunications engineer skills assessment, so he's got two of them in Melbourne and working in nominated occupation related to healthcare for the past two months. Uh, did masters in Queensland need to do PT for 20? Um, working in ABN, so what is the process for that? Uh, see, I'm going to explain you the Queensland state nomination process and the Victorian state nomination process uh, later in the session um, uh, in a few minutes time. So obviously you have to make sure if you, uh, well, it seems that you're working in the target sector and you're using your STEM skills. Uh, you have to have high points as far as I know uh, for Victorian state nominations, which should be a minimum of 85 points. Uh, and it all, a lot of things depends on uh, depend on how you put up your ROI uh, for Victorian State. H how uh, how you answer your questions. You make sure uh, if you've got the required points and you fulfill all the other criteria for Victorian State nomination, um, uh, make sure your ROI is is pretty good, and then you have good chances of getting uh, invited by the Victorian State. Uh, for Queensland. Um, you would be eligible because you've done your masters, it seems, from there in Queensland. You would be eligible for 491 from Queensland, but obviously you have to meet the other criteria as well, uh, where I think you should have a three months job and, and, and job offer letter as well. I'll come to that uh, later in the session today. Um, uh, Sumani, was, I, I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from India and master's in project management from Sydney. Uh, I've launched EOI for 190 visa type at 80 plus five points in mechanical engineering. I don't have a uh, job experience of one year and Manati is still in process. Um, for, for 190 NSW Samanio, NSW is really inviting people at higher points, which could which could range from 90 to the cutoff sometimes has gone uh, to 90 points as well. Um, I would recommend that you, you, it's a good thing that you launched your EOI. There's always a chance of getting invited for 190. Uh, um, yeah, I, I think you've got a chance. Uh, let's see how they behave in the next in this financial year. Uh, but last year, the the invitations for NSW 119 were not uh, were not that many. I mean, the higher they were basically inviting people at higher points. Um, you you've got uh, option of putting up an EUI for Western Australia as well. Um, yeah, so mechanical engineer is one of the occupations in the general stream in Western Australia as well. So that option is also available. Um, I have completed master's in electrical engineer and have done skills assessment. I have 80 points for state, but no job in my field. Uh, so not every state needs a job in your field. Um, make sure you, you go through the criteria of each state and see where you can possibly qualify. Uh, you would qualify for, I don't know where you're living, where you've studied from. You could qualify for one of the states um, uh, for, for, for electric as, a, as an occupation um, for the occupation electrical engineer. Raghav, what are the chances for mechanical engineer for 119 WA 90 points? Uh, well, I think you've got a very good chance of getting invited at 90 points, Raghav. For 491, I can almost guarantee that you'll get invited very quickly. But for 190 also, you've got a very, it's very likely that you'll get invited uh, under WA in the general spring uh, in this financial year. How much fee do we charge uh, for complete PR process? Well, Pallavi, we cannot uh, actually tell you that uh, in this session, but obviously you're most welcome to contact us uh, in person or over the phone and we'll be able to uh, give you uh, our entire fee structure. Uh, I have positive skills assessment for mechanical engineer. I have 60 points. So what is next requirement for me? 
See, double, uh, I would say um, on the onset, you need to increase your points by a little bit, uh, at least, because 65 points are mostly not enough for any of the state nomination applications, as well as uh, obviously for 189 and 491 family sponsored as well. Uh, the state, uh, well, it depends where you've studied from. Uh, if you've studied from South Australia, I guess South Australia is a good state as well, but otherwise Western Australia uh, has this occupation on its list as well, even if you haven't studied in Western Australia. Um, all right, um, Thilini, uh, is, is production test and support engineer related to electrical and electronics engineer, so would be able to get PR? Uh, so electrical engineering and electronic engineering are two separate occupations, Thilini. So you'll have to go, uh, are you asking me in terms of uh, closely related occupations would be able to get PR from Victoria? Well, Victorian state nomination uh, requires you to be working in one of the target sectors and using your STEM skills. Are you? I think you are asking me whether this support engineer, production test and support engineer are closely related to electrical and electronic engineering or not. So I've told this before, just like five minutes ago, that you have to go to the ANSCO code and look uh, at the duties there. So if your duties match with those with that unit group there, then you could say that you are actually performing duties in a closely related occupation to your nominated occupation in Victoria. Yes, you're correct. One of the requirements for Victorian state nomination is that you should be performing you should be working in the one of the target sectors in your closely related occupation as well and using your using the stem skills so yeah you just have to go uh, to the ansco and see what what sort of duties titles don't matter as much uh, but the duties do so make sure you put that in the roi as well um good um saf is our engineering technologist currently with 70 points excluding state points uh in regional nsw um well uh, as long as you meet See, the criteria is 12 months, but they've been uh, inviting people with three months of experience as well. Uh, so if you've got your occupation in one of the regions list, I think it's good. It's a good idea to put up the ROI whenever the window opens uh, next. Uh, I would say you've got a you've got a chance of getting invited by NSW regional. I think the things are going to get easier this financial year uh, because uh, we need a lot of skilled workers in Australia and obviously not many people are still coming in uh, inside Australia. So uh, even if you've got three months of experience and not 12 months as is required under stream one, I think you should still put up your ROI and see what happens. I think you might uh, get invited uh, for, for, for one of the regions if you obviously meet the other criteria. What are the chances of mechanical engineer? Uh, I, I think I've answered this before. Um, how to find an Engineers Australia website? Uh, it's not that, um, uh, I mean, I think there's a tab which is called Migration Skills Assessment on top of the website. I think you uh, press the tab, you'll get all the information there. Um, mechanical engineer with 90 plus 5 currently in NSW, Jagdish, good chances of getting invited as a mechanical engineer. Um, put up your UI and hope for the invitation soon, I would say. Um, really confused, this data engineer job is counted in ACS. Uh, so I don't know what data engineer is. Uh, it's not an occupation on the skill list, so it depends whether uh, it's an ICT based uh, engineering occupation or it's an engineering uh, occupation. So or masters in data science and R. So yeah, so that would only qualify um, uh, for one of the ICT occupations. You'll have to go through ACS. Yes, you'll have to go through ACS. It's not an uh, like an engineer, uh, it's not a degree which is assessed by Engineers Australia. You'll have to go through ACS here. Uh, civil engineer with 95 points, what state do you think has better chances for living in? Uh, Ushma, I think Western Australia, you've got a great chance of getting uh, nominated for uh, for 190, but the, the way Western Australian nomination works is under the general stream that uh, they'll prefer people who are living in Western Australia over people who are living in other states. So. Until and unless you put your location uh, in your EOI as Western Australia, the chances of getting invited uh, become uh, a little less. So as long as you put your location as Western Australia in your EOI, you 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 have a high, high like good likelihood of getting invited under the 190 state nomination under the general stream from Western Australia. Jagdish uh, again uh, with 90 plus five points as a mechanical engineer. Uh, I think Western Australia is a pretty good option. I think Western Australia 
uh, is a pretty good option for for anybody here at the moment um, because there's no, nothing major that you have to do for moving to Western Australia and then qualifying under the general stream even if you haven't studied in uh, Western Australia. Um, al although you need to get an employment contract from one of the employers in Western Australia, but that's after you get invited. So you still qualify even if you do not have an employment contract for from an employer in, in Western Australia. Um, not working 85 plus 500 for 491 living in Sydney. Uh, well, Karthik, I think you just have to wait. I think you've got a pretty good score. Um, but obviously uh, for 491, um, you might not qualify because you're not working in the nominated occupation as some of the regions require you to. Um, but yes, for 190, I think you've got a good chance, but we'll have to see how NSW gives out invitations in this financial year. Um, what should be the best date to, uh, to study masters in mechanical engineering at the moment? Jitin, um, uh, Western Australia is, is a pretty good state. I would suggest, as, as uh, Tiani had suggested in her presentation, that there are lots of benefits of studying in uh, regional areas of Australia as well. Um, so you get an extra, you get longer for it, which is the temporary work visa after you study. You also um, qualify for five extra points from, from the regions if you study in regional areas. Uh, so yeah, the, so studying in a regional area is definitely, I, I guess, ha has benefits more than what you would get by studying in Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. Um, as is written in the in the in the chat section, you can always contact us for further information uh, by clicking that link which says contact us. Uh, Ramzan is asking WA is good option for mechanical engineering to settle. Yes, certainly Ramzan. It's a very good option at the moment WA. It has been very consistent in giving out invitations to people who haven't even studied in WA since last year, since it opened uh, the general stream, which is um, under which people even from interstate are eligible. So I would say W is a very good option for mechanical engineer to settle. And 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 we've got this large mining industry here as well. Uh, and I've seen people uh, getting jobs in WA with not not much difficulty. Obviously. Atul is asking me, I'm a chemical engineer with 90 points, 491 and 80 points for 190 have launched my EOI for WA. Uh, Will I get invited for 491 and 190? If yes, what is the number? Um, Atul, uh, I believe you haven't studied in WA. I think you've still got very good chances of getting invited for 491. Um, yeah, so Tiani has written there in the chat section that you get extra five points. You get four, you can get up to four years of post study work visa uh, if you study in WA. So WA is a very good state to study in if you're starting off your career right now. Um, Muhammad is asking me, would it be a good idea to look for a PR agent now? I have got one year left for my mechatronics degree in NSW. Uh, also, would I, if I ended up settling in Australia? Well, yes, Muhammad, certainly it's a good idea to uh, to know your options and, and going to a migration agent as soon as possible rather than going at the very last minute uh, so that at least you know that you are studying towards the right pathway and everything is going well. So it's not a bad idea to to go to a migration agent right now and see what options are available to you, even even though those options might only be available after you complete your study. And Western Australia, as I said, uh, as long as your occupation uh, for which you can possibly get the skills assessment for is under the general stream, and you can have a look at the general stream occupations under the. Now they've issued a combined occupation list, Western Australia. So make sure that you uh, your occupation is on that list and. Uh, uh, and and then you would be able to qualify for Western Australia. And if you have that occupation on that list, it's a very good option. Uh, I have degree assessment in web developer with 65 points. Uh, well, uh, Ekta, you have to meet a lot of criteria for Queensland government. Uh, there, it's all published on the website. You have to have studied there for masters. If you haven't studied masters there, uh, then you and if you've studied masters there, you have to have a certain GP, uh, GPA. And if you've done, if not studied in Queensland, you have to be working there for uh, six months or 12 months, and then you have to have a future job offer letter as well. I'll be explaining all that all that later in the session today. Uh, so keep listening, please. Um, in 
from Engineers Australia how to find accredited institution or accredited uh, courses. So if you go under the migration skills assessment and if you go to a link which says, um, uh, I think it's called pathway or something, uh, there you'll find a link to all the educational institution uh, in institutions in Australia which are accredited by Engineers Australia. Uh, uh, does a casual job from a labor hire agency in relevant profession can be used for WA 190? Uh, yes, Ali, it could possibly be used for WA 190 as long as you meet the other requirements for the job, which are like if you're applying under the general stream, it should be for 12 months duration. Uh, you should have basically have 12 months remaining on your job uh, when you make your state nomination application. And also it should be full time as well. So they must, although the position could be casual, but the employer must guarantee at least 35 hours per week, which is considered to be full time uh, for Western Australian state nomination program uh, for the next 12 months if you are applying under the general stream. So I don't care whether you are employed as a full time person or a part time person or in the casual position, as long as employer is guaranteeing 30, giving you 35 hours per week, every week for the next 12 months. Uh, when you're launching your state nomination application, that should be sufficient. All right, um, going back to our slides now. Um, sec. So yes, uh, we were talking about the employment assessment. Uh, as I said earlier, employment assessment is not mandatory, but you can always get it done from Engineers Australia. Uh, under the CDR pathway, so these are the steps, bas basic steps. So you prepare your personal documentation which would include your qualification documents and your identity documents. Uh, you obviously have to nominate an occupation as well. Uh, they're not going to nominate an occupation for you. Um, sorry, just a minute. Um, uh, and obviously, uh, you have to have evidence of employment if your career episodes are based on, especially if your career episodes are based on an employment episode or you are applying for the skills assessment for engineering manager. Uh, you have to make your CPD statement, you have to make your career episodes, and you have to make your summary statement. So this, these are the basic steps if you are applying under uh, the CDR pathway. Um, as I was telling you before, you, this the, all the work under the CDR pathway must be your own work. So it cannot be done by anybody else. And if you do get caught under plagiarism, uh, there could be a 12 month span. And obviously Engineers Australia will report this to the Department of Home Affairs as well. Um, so again, this is the basic checklist. So identification documents, uh, career episodes, summary statement, um, employment evidence, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously English test results are necessary as well. Uh, but if you've done a bachelor's or a master's in Australia, this could probably be possibly be exempted. So these are the most popular occupations that Engineers Australia assesses, along with some of the other non-popular occupations as well. So the so engineering manager, managing mechanical engineer, uh, chemical, civil, uh, electrical. So these are the drafts persons uh, on the right side, uh, on the very right side. Uh, which only require you to have an, um, an advanced diploma, two years advanced diploma rather than a four years bachelor's degree. Uh, obviously, engineering technologist is another occupation which only requires you to have a three years bachelor's degree instead of the four years bachelor's degree, which is required for the professional engineers. All right, let's get to permanent visa pathways for engineers. So just briefly, there are three categories, 189, 190 and 491. One and nine is independent, uh, which is where you are directly invited by the Department of Home Affairs. You're not sponsored by any state, neither you have to fulfill any state criteria. Uh, it's a purely points based visa and you have to have your occupation on the MLT SSL list. Now, most of the engineering occupations are there on the MLT SSL list. Under the state sponsorship, we've got two vis uh, visas, which are subclass 190 and 491. Uh, however, 491 visa can also be nominated by an, under a family by a family member, uh, provided the family member is an eligible relative, uh, like the relationship is defined in, under the law and they're living in one of the regions in Australia rather than in Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. Uh, under the state nomination uh, visas, which is subclass 190 and 491, uh, 
obviously, you have to fulfill the other state criteria as well. The points threshold remains the same for all these three categories, which is 65 points. You must have a minimum of 65 points, although under 190, you get five points from the state. So even if you have 60 points of your own, you can still qualify. And under 491 visa, whether you're sponsored by a state or a family member, you get 15 points. Uh, so even if you have 50 points of your own, you can still qualify under that category because your total will ultimately reach 65 points. Skills assessment is must under all these three categories. There's no occupation without the skills assessment. So if you do not have a skills assessment, you cannot qualify in any of these categories or for that matter, for any of the other categories uh, in the employer sponsored uh, visas as well. Uh, uh, like there are a few exceptions to that rule though. You have to have a minimum of competent English uh, to qualify for any of these three categories. Um, although most of the states may require you to have at least proficient English, which is uh, seven each in IELTS or equivalent in PT or other other language tests. Um, yeah, so one in nine is a permanent visa. One ninety is a permanent visa. Four nine one is a temporary visa, uh, which you are given for five years. Uh, but you only have to work on this visa for three years and then you can become eligible for permanent visas as well. Uh, so it's a very good visa to have. Uh, it's almost a guaranteed PR. All you have to do is work in any occupation for three years and earn a certain amount of money every year. Uh, so these are the latest uh, migration planning levels which were, which are published by the Department of Home Affairs uh, on their website for 2022-2023. Uh, uh, so the thing is that uh, Although the total number of uh, places remain the same in the entire migration planning level, which is 100 and, um, uh, 160,000 um, uh, 160, seats, but they've reduced the number of seats in the family migration section, which are basically reduced under the partner visa from 70,000 to 40,000 and added them to the skilled migration category. So as you could see under the skilled independent category, We've got an increase of around 8,000 seats and under the state and territory nominated visas, we've got an increase of and even in the regional visas, we've got an increase of more than 10,000 seats uh, in under both these categories. So things are looking up under both uh, under the skilled migration uh, program in, in Australia. So I would say that you would be the points threshold the threshold can go a little bit lower uh, in, in this financial year. And uh, and uh, you could get invited at lower point score as well. Um, so briefly, I'll be discussing about uh, the NSW pathway, uh, various states pathway for for engineers under the 190. Although they are, as I said, they are closed for the time being. Uh, they would be reopening soon with a fresh criteria. Uh, but the previous criteria was that you should be at least living in NSW for three months, or if you're not, then you must be. Uh, uh, nomin you must be working in your nominated or closely related occupation in a long term capacity, right? In NSW, that's that's what qualified you for 190 NSW. For 491 visa, we've got three streams there: stream one, stream two, stream three. Stream one, living and working for 12 months. Although uh, you could qualify under that stream after working there for three months, and your occupation is on the combined occupation list. And under stream two, you should have studied there for two years in one of the regions and stream three, as long as you have an occupation uh, under one of the regions list, you could possibly get invited, but not many occupations. Not many people were invited under stream three from NSW regions. We know that for a fact. Under Western Australia, we've got two streams. One is general stream. Under the general stream, uh, which falls under schedule two, uh, we've got anybody who's got a skills assessment for an occupation under that list, is, is eligible, but WA will only invite people who are living in WA first, and then people who are living in the state, and then people who are living overseas. So this is how WA will prioritize people as far as the residency is concerned. Um, uh, obviously, um, you will need an employment contract for 12 months full-time employment as well uh, from WA, uh, from an employer in WA after you get invited, as, and you will have to submit that as part of your state nomination application. Uh, but nothing is re required before you get invited from WA. Uh, obviously, uh, proficient English is required for all the engineering occupations. Only some of the occupations, which are trade occupations, do not have to have uh, proficient English in the WA under the WA criteria. Rest mostly all the occupations require 
you need to have proficient English. Um, under the graduate stream, the second stream which we have, you must have studied uh, in WA for at least two years face to face. If you haven't studied in WA for two years, uh, then you would not qualify um, uh, under the graduate stream. You'll only qualify under the general stream if your occupation is on that list. Obviously, under the graduate stream, you get invited uh, for under for lesser points as compared to general stream. So if you study in WA two, uh, for two years, uh, and you obviously have meet the other criteria such as uh, having proficient English, and you have either have a six months job uh, job experience in your nominated occupation, or you have a six months job of a letter from an employer in WA, the chances are that you will get invited for as low as 70 points and 75 points, uh, even for 190 in WA. So you've got a very good chance of getting invited in WA under the graduate stream if you've studied in WA for at least two years. Let me just have a look at the questions that might have come in. Uh, 90 Atul is writing 90 points chemical engineer 491 family sponsored or 491 regional. Uh, Atul, um, 189 and 491 family sponsored are two categories. Um, I never tell my clients to rely on, to depend on. Obviously, you've got, a, I think, in my opinion, you've got a good chance of getting invited. Are you telling me that you've got 90 points without the 15 points for the family? If that is the case, I think you've got a good chance of getting invited under the 491 family sponsored as well. And obviously under the 491 regional as well, if you meet the criteria for, for the particular region that you're trying to uh, nominate yourself for. Uh, but obviously 491 regional has the uh, has much, much higher chance of getting invited. Firstly, because see 491 family sponsored rounds only happen quarterly. That means after every three months in a year, whereas a 491 regional in some of the states can happen uh, every month. So, uh, and also 491 regional will invite you much, much faster and in much, much quicker session uh, in a fashion than, than uh, you. And 491 family sponsored, you never you can never be 100% sure whether you get invited or not. Although I still believe that you've got a very good chance of getting invited and with the points uh, that you have under that category as well, provided obviously you meet the other criteria. Um, Halavi, what are the chances of getting NSW 190 or 189 for electronics or telecommunications engineer? Uh, Palavi, uh, NSW was inviting people in the last financial year at a, at a little bit higher points than 80 points. So I would say uh, if you had 90 points, your chances would become much, much brighter. But still, you can put up an expression of interest. Um, I would suggest do not depend on 189 uh, at 80 points. Make yourself eligible for one of the other states as well, if you could, either NSW region or Western Australia or South Australia or Tasmania as well. So wherever you think you could possibly meet the criteria, uh, I think that's a good good idea to do that uh, rather than just putting all all your chips on NSW 190 or 189. Um, so moving back to the criteria slides. Um, so we've explained uh, under the South Australia. Um, so South Australian uh, state nomination is an occupation based state nomination. So basically every occupation can have a different criteria. So most of the engineering occupations would require you to actually work there, especially uh, for at least 12 months to 18 months in the Adelaide area. Obviously this requirement, the work experience requirement will get reduced if you're working outside of Adelaide in regional South Australia. Um, and this will uh, further decrease if you have been graduated, if you if you've done your two year study and graduated from South Australian educational institution. So yes, so you, all you have to do is go to the South Australian occupation list, type in your occupation there, and it'll tell you what you require to do uh, in your uh, occupation. Um, yes, so if you're obviously if you're residing and working for the last 12 months in the outer regional South Australia, outside of the Adelaide metropolitan area, you could be working in one of the other occupations as well, and then still you could state could nominate you. Uh, obviously, you have to give them the reasons as as per the criteria on the website. Uh, for 190, uh, obviously, uh, so for the engineers, you have to be working for at least 12 months. Um, 12 months. Uh, 
12 months in some of the engineering occupations and 18 months in some of the other engineering occupations. Uh, and, and this gets reduced if you're working outside of Adelaide, Adelaide metropolitan area. Uh, for 491, possibly all the engineering pathways are only uh, available under the talent and innovators uh, pathway in South Australia. Uh, for people who are out, uh, studied outside of South Australia, especially. Um, uh, for 190, obviously, you'll have to work there for 18 months in Adelaide or, or a little bit less, or 12 months for some occupations in Adelaide or a little bit less outside of Adelaide metropolitan area. Uh, for Victoria, it is based on the registration of interest, where you must be working in one of the target sectors and using your STEM skills as well. And you should be working in one of your nominated occupations or closely related nomination of uh, closely related uh, operations uh, in one of the target sectors to be able to qualify. You'll need higher points, uh, 85 points. That's what Victoria states. Uh, and obviously you'll have to put up a uh, registration of interest. There's no window for it. You can put it up any anytime you like. Uh, and and obviously, uh, as, as, as I was telling you earlier, your registration of interest uh, should be good enough for, for the case officer to be impressed by it and, and to invite you on that basis. Northern Territory, you must either be a graduate of Northern Territory and living there for the six months. Or if, if, you, if, if you are unable to live in the Northern Territory for six months after completing two years of study, you can still, still be nominated for 491 nomination. But if you want to get yourself considered for 190 nomination, you must be living there for six months as well after you've completed your uh, qualifications from Northern Territory. Otherwise, if you studied from interstate, you could be you could be uh, you could go there and work there for 12 months in your nominated occupation uh, and then you could qualify for 491. Right, uh, so these are the basic criteria for Northern Territory straight nomination. Uh, ACT, um, ACT, obviously you have to have the qualifying score for of 65 points according to the Department of Home Affairs, uh, but you must satisfy uh, the qualifying score of 65 on the on the ACT matrix as well. Now, a ACT matrix has different points for different criteria, which is which is pretty different from what uh, the uh, the points we get from the Department of Home Affairs. But the basic eligibility criteria for 491 in ACT is that you must be living there and working uh, there for three months. Now, you could be working outside of your nominated occupation as well, but then you wouldn't get certain points on the ACT matrix. And um, for 190, uh, as uh, you must be working and living there for six months. Uh, and obviously, you'll have to have the required ACT uh, point score on the matrix as well to qualify. Um, so these are some of the engineering occupations which are on the ACT list. Uh, quite a few there. Uh, PR pathways in Queensland um, for 190 and 491. You must be a PhD graduate for 190. Otherwise, it's just 491. Um, and those are the requirements that you must have done. Uh, so obviously have an occupation on this skilled occupation list. Uh, all the engineering occupations are there on that list. Um, if you've done your master's, you must have a GPA of 6.0 or higher. Have must have seven each or equivalent uh, in English and have a minimum of three months work experience of at least 20 hours per week uh, and, and have a job offer as well for the next 12 months. Uh, for uh, for there's another pathway of skilled workers living in Queensland, um, where you must have a points um, uh, of 80 or higher for 190 and 65 or higher for 491. Um, so you must be working there for six months at least, uh, and have a further job offer letter um, for 190. And if you are uh, making yourself eligible for the 491 state nomination, that you must be working for three months in a regional area for an employer located in a regional area and you must have an ongoing employment for further 12 months as well uh, and the, and obviously for the 491 state nomination the ongoing employment must be from an employer in the regional area as well um bear with me uh harsh kumar is asking any rules have changed for south australia in 22 23 uh it doesn't seem like uh not yet, not for the engineering occupations at least. And in my opinion, um, things are looking up, Harsh Kumar. I think things, uh, rules are going to get easy rather than being tough as we need a lot of skilled migrants in Australia. And moreover, there are more seats under the state nomination categories now uh, under, the, under, the, under the planning levels in Australia for this financial year.
So for Tasmania, these are the requirements for 190. You must have studied for in Tasmania for two years, or you must have six months of full time experience in your nominated occupation in Tasmania. Um, and employer should be well established for the last 12 months. In 491 visa, you must have one year study at least, and one year stay it must have been one year study and living in uh, Tasmania, and 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 six months job experience. Uh, uh, for an employer which is well established and in a skill level from one to three. So there are many occupations which are excluded under that list. You cannot be working like you cannot be driving Uber or you cannot be working at a petrol station. Um, so these are the basic criteria for, for the skills assessment for various states in Australia as far as engineering occupations are concerned. Um, uh, Abhishek is asking me, is Victorian criteria going to be the same for 2023? See, Abhishek, nobody can tell for sure, but I think they should make it easier. I think they're not giving out as many invitations as they should be, but let's see how it goes. But at the moment, we cannot we cannot depend on the fact that they'll be changing the criteria. We'll have to go by what they have today. Um, um, well, as if they've, they've given them planning levels under the state sponsorship stream, and uh, as I was telling earlier, They've increased the planning level, uh, levels under the state nomination criteria uh, program uh, by almost uh, by almost 12,000 12, seats. So yes, so all the states would be. Uh, I, I do not have the numbers for like, like I do not know how many how many seats each state has been allocated yet. I don't think it has happened yet, but e even if it has happened, I don't have the numbers in front of me. State wise, I don't have the numbers. Sorry, I don't think uh, that has been announced so far. Uh, now, for all the engineering occupations, uh, we have the employer sponsored category open as well. So uh, there are three visas under the employer sponsored category. One is the first one is 482 visa. The second one is 186 visa and the third one is 494 visa. So under the 482 visa, which is a temporary employer sponsored category, you must have two years of experience in your nominated occupation. Now, this experience can be from anywhere in the world. But this experience has to be full time as well. Uh, you have to be working at least a minimum of 38 hours per week in your nominated occupation for at least two years uh, in the last five years for 482 visas for you to become eligible under this uh, for this visa. And obviously, it is an employer sponsored visa. You, you must have an employer who's willing to sponsor you. So let's say you are a civil engineer, you got a uh, and you do not necessarily have to have a skills assessment as well for 482 visas. For all the other employer sponsored visas, you must have a skills assessment for not for the 482. Uh, but let's say you're a civil engineer and you've worked uh, two years, even in overseas in the last five years uh, in, in, as a civil engineer, then you could be uh, possibly get um, nominated uh, if if, an, if you find an employer is willing to nominate you as a civil engineer anywhere in Australia. It could be anywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, regional, non-regional, 482 is everywhere. As long as, yeah, so all the occupations are there on the 482 list, engineering occupations mostly. Uh, now, the second employer sponsored visas, uh, visa is 186, which is a permanent employer sponsored visa. For this, you must have three years of full time work experience uh, in the uh, and you must have a skills assessment for your engineering occupation as well, under which your employer is trying to nominate you. Um, there are two streams in this visa. One is one, direct entry, one is TRT. Direct entry is for anybody who's worked, who's, who's got three years of experience anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be Australian experience as long as it is full time and as long as it is in your nominated occupation or even in the closely related occupation, it should be fine. And the employer can still nominate you for this permanent visa and you'll become permanent resident pretty much straight away after this visa gets approved. Uh, obviously, the other requirements apply, which which essentially are that you should be under the 45 years of age, but th these are not points tested visas. You do not have to go through the normal uh, cycle of putting up an EOI and then waiting for the invitation. As soon as you have an employer who's willing to nominate you and you meet the criteria, you can put up an application pretty much straight away uh, without having to wait for somebody else to giving you an invitation. Um, Skilled employer sponsored regional uh, 494 visa. Now, 494 visa is mostly for people who have a skills assessment for an occupation uh, that is not on the MLT SSL list, but is on the ROL list. Um, so, but most of the engineering occupations, I believe, are on the MLT SSL list, except for some some of the few occupations. 
so, but if your employer is only willing to sponsor you for a 494 visa, you can still get sponsored for a 494 visa. Uh, but your employer must be in regional part of Australia, which should be outside of Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. Uh, you must have three years of full time work experience in the last five years and must have a skills assessment in your nominated occupation. So this is a five years visa, which is very similar to the 491 visa, which we had talked about um, under the state nomination uh, section and under the family uh, nomination section. So you have do you get this visa for five years? You have to work on this visa for three years and then you will you can apply for the permanent visa, which is subclass 191. Um, so obviously, uh, that's my email address on your screen there. You're more than welcome to uh, flick me an email for any questions that you may have regarding this session or or any other query that you may have regarding your migration uh, pathways in Australia. Uh, I'll just quickly go through any other questions that might have come in. Uh, Abhishek, engineering technologist, correct. Engineering technologist is now on the WA list. Uh, Abhishek is asking me what is the best possible way to get PR in Victoria for engineering technologists uh, because engineering technologists is not in other states occupation list. Well, engineering technologists is now in the WA list for unfortunately only for the graduates of WA. So people only who have studied in WA for two years would now qualify uh, as engineering technologists as well in WA. Uh, you have to be as far as Victorian state nomination is concerned. You have to be working in one of the health sectors uh, and you have to have high points and then you could possibly get invited for 190 and 491 in Victoria as well. Um, uh, Jarel is asking me is work experience during study in Australia considered in visa uh, 186? Uh, no, Jarel, mostly not. Uh, so in 186, the work experience has to be at a highly skilled level. So any experience which is below the uh, the qualification level as mentioned in NANSCO, I would not I would not use it for the three years work experience requirement uh, for 186. So it has to be at, at, a, at a certain skill level. Um, so yes, um, I this is this is the session for uh, engineering uh, skills assessment and engineering pathways uh, for PI in Australia. As I said, you're more than welcome to uh, to contact us further about any of the queries that you might have. And as uh, Tiani was telling you earlier, we've got some uh, giveaways. So if you can tag us um, on Facebook and other social media platforms, we uh, you have uh, we can possibly offer you free PR consultations, free PT sessions, free 485 consultations, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, make sure you do that to receive all those benefits and you can direct all your questions. We've got many other sessions in this conclave today as well as for the next three days. So stay tuned and and for all the information uh, that you might need for your migration in Australia. Thank you for today. Thanks everyone and just um, that tag is at Aussies Group and Aussies Group Conclave 2022 for amazing giveaways. Thank you. Bye.